Welcome to MAT 2LB, booklet number 8, fractions, lesson number 4, adding and subtracting fractions, change to denominators. So in the last lesson, uh, we did adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator. And Riley, that's the first question you want to be asking yourself anytime you're going to add or subtract fractions. Am I dealing with the same denominator with the fractions that I want to add or subtract? Um, and the reason is, and we didn't spend a lot of time talking about it in the last lesson, um, but we've set up sort of an understanding piece in, as this lesson, is that you cannot ever add or subtract fractions unless they have the same denominator. And the reason is that if the denominators are different, what you're actually saying is that the number of pieces in each whole, so again, the example that we've set up here, this particular whole has been broken up into one, two, three, four pieces, and this one here has been broken up into one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So you've got each of these holes being divided up into different amounts of stuff, and you can't just willy-nilly start trying to add or subtract them from each other. And here's the reason. So let me just erase that, what I've drawn. And if I were going to try to add a slice of this particular, or a piece of this particular um, whole, so a fraction, this would be one quarter that we would have here. If I were to try to add that into this other fraction, it wouldn't, uh, into this other um, whole, it wouldn't actually fit any of the pieces. And let me show you, I'll just sort of grab this piece and try to move it in there. You'll notice that it's actually a bigger amount of stuff than any one is here. You'll see how we've actually got this little bit here that overspills. So unless the denominators, which again represent the size, that uh, the number and size of each piece inside the fractions, are the same, we can't be adding and subtracting them. So we have to get the same denominator. And that's what this, this lesson today is about how to get two denominators that are different to become the same. So we're going to change both denominators. And let's see how we do that. So let's jump down into the example. The first example is to add or subtract the following fractions with different denominators. So we've got 1 over 2 minus 1 over 5. So again, that first question I want you to ask yourself is, are your denominators the same? And we can see that they are not the same. One of our denominators is 2, the other denominator is 5. They're not the same, so we are going to have to get them the same. We're going to change both of them in this instance. How do we do that? Well, we are going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator in our second fraction by the denominator of the first one. So the first denominator is a 2. We are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator of the second fraction by 2. We are also, at the same time, going to multiply, whoops, we are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by the denominator of the second. So our second denominator is 5. We are going to multiply numerator and denominator here by 5. So that is our first step, is to recognize that the, base, uh, the denominators are not the same, and we're going to multiply each fraction by the other denominator. So now that we're done that, let's actually do this little bit of math. So we've got 5 times 1. We're going to rewrite. So 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 times 2 is 10, minus 1 times 2 is 2, and 5 times 2 is 10. So what we've done here is we've rewritten, and we've got now 5 over 10 minus 2 over 10. So that's our rewrite. That's step 2 here that we just did. And now we're going to go about adding and subtracting the numerator while keeping the denominator. So the denominator is 10, we're going to keep it, and we're going to do the numerator math, which is 5 minus 2, and that's going to give us 3. So our answer then is going to be 3 over 10, or 3 tenths. And that's how we go about it. Let's review those steps in example number 2. Add or subtract the following fractions with different denominators. So again, let's zoom and have a look. We have 2 thirds plus 1 quarter. First question, are our denominators the same? They are not. 1 is a 3, 1 is a 4, so we are going to need to change the denominators to make them the same so we can do the adding and subtracting, in this case adding. So we are going to take our first denominator and we are going to multiply both numerator and denominator of the second fraction by that first numerator. So that's 3, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 3, and we're going to do the same thing to the first fraction with the second denominator. So second denominator is 4, and we are going to multiply both numerator and denominator by 4. Our next step, step number 2, is a rewrite. So we are going to actually perform this multiplication. So 4 times 2 gives me 8, 
3 times or 4 times 3 gives me 12 plus 1 times 3 is 3 and 4 times 3 is 12. So you'll notice that now our denominators are the same. 12 in both cases. We are going to keep our denominator and we are going to perform either the addition or subtraction needed for uh, the numerator. In this case it's adding and 8 plus 3 is going to be 11. So our answer in this question is going to be 11 twelfths or 11 over 12. So this is how you go about changing two denominators so that you can add and subtract fractions. Let's try one more here together, again without the steps in the structure, and then we'll let you guys try B on your own. So here we have, in example A, 7 fourths minus 1 third. So first things first, base the same, not the same. One of the denominators is 3, one of the denominators is 4. So we don't have the same denominator, we need to change both. So I'm going to take the second, uh, first denominator and multiply numerator and denominator of the second fraction by that denominator. And we are going to do the same thing with the second denominator, multiplying numerator and denominator whoops, of the first fraction by that 3. So we have 3 times 7 and 3 times 4. Our next line is going to be to rewrite. So let's do the mathematics here. 3 times 7 is 21. 4 times 3 is 12 minus, and now this is 1 times 4 is 4, and 3 times 4 is 12. So once you've done this step, you'll notice that we have successfully changed both denominators so that now they're the same. We've got 21 twelfths minus 4 twelfths, so now we can actually do the math. So we are going to keep our denominator, that's a 12, and for our numerator we are going to subtract 4 from 21 which is going to give us 17, and 17 twelfths will be our answer. Now, this is an improper fraction. Is that okay to end up with an improper fraction? Absolutely no trouble with that. So, I'd like you guys to hit pause here and try example B on your own. Again, remembering, identify whether the denominators are the same. If they're not, you're going to have to change them. Remember, set up the procedure, do the math, then do the addition and subtraction. So give it a try. Come on back when you're done, we'll see how you did. All right, you're back. Let's have a look here. Our denominators are not the same. One is seven and one is four. So we are going to take the first denominator and multiply the numerator and denominator of the second fraction by that first denominator. And then we're gonna do the same thing with that second denominator, multiplying numerator and denominator of the first fraction by that denominator. So. We've set this up, now we're going to actually rewrite doing the mathematics. So we have 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 7 is 28, plus 3 times 7 is 21, and 4 times 7, 28 again. Here again you'll notice your denominators are the same, both are 28. From here we are going to keep our denominator, 28, and we are going to perform the addition with our numerators, and 4 plus 21 is 20. 5 28ths. So this is the end of lesson number four. If you're feeling like you need a little more review, go back and try some of these questions again from within the lesson. Uh, otherwise, head off to the worksheet and we'll see you in lesson number five.